You're tuned in to RX Radio. Movement prescribed. Brought to you by Prescript.com. A personalized approach to keeping you healthy and making your best even better. Your hosts, Dr. Jordan Shallow and Dr. Jordan Jinta. Oh God. So it's like, yeah. The thing is, you message a DM like that, it's like that fucker's coming back and he's bringing friends. Oh yeah, dude. There's a, there's a oh, fuck. What is he? He's a podiatrist. In oh, Miami. have you been hit up by him? I've been hit dude, up by the podiatrist. There's a podiatrist in Miami who's got a who's got a thing for like meatheads, and I think he must like follow gym locations and like search gym locations and just he just shoots a shot. And we no. had one of a, a friend of the podcast ended up, and it's always on it's, the tape. But dude, the sales pitch is weird because he's a podiatrist, but the mm-hmm. sales pitch is always uh, a deep leg, leg massage. massage. <laughs> That's yeah. a hard no for me. Like, I'm not a massage guy, period. Oh yeah, no, no, I can't. And people it's don't a, get a, it. It's a miss for me. It's a big I, mess. Because uh, what it is with me with the massage is like for it to be, I don't want to say effective. But like, mm. I just I feel like I got to tip more after because like I've had one once and it was like I could feel the beads of sweat and I heard once like this noise like, the fuck was that? And I look, the lady had her foot on the wall. Yeah, I was like, okay, I got it. This is not the flat fee, right? No. Like I got, I'm getting tax on the back end of this. Like we're done here. But yeah, the the, the DM inquiry uh, for those of you just joining this this stream of consciousness, I got a DM about leggings. And tights. It's like uh, you can't answer that. Like well, I like to answer direct messages, but like that if that's what you're coming out of the gate with, it's getting worse. I feel like with the tights DM, like you said, he comes back with friends. Right. It's like Clockwork Orange. Oof, it's a true. bunch of dudes chugging milk at a cod piece coming after you, and like <laughs> that's not a fight in a dark alley. I'm inviting. <laughs> Yeah, anything ever gets described is like, hey, do you know clock records? It's not a good thing. Yeah, it's a pass for me. Yeah, no, it's um, – I've got – actually, you were with – it was in Calgary? The crushing? The crushing email? Oh, crushing is good. That's a weird – it's just – I don't know. I just – it's so funny. When I was sponsored by – I was sponsored by Universal, mm. and there was a girl who was telling me about, like, sanctioned wrestling matches – that were like legit, like she, she and this is her words, like legit, mm. right? Where, where it's they get together and they're like highly supervised. And I, when I think of these things, I think <laughs> in the same way that, um, remember in old school where they bring like the 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 merry go round and the fucking animals and the guys got the tranquilizer gun. I feel like that's how these wrestle because it's guys who want to wrestle muscular girls. Mm. And there's like a dude who saw a marketplace for it. It was like, okay, let's make this extremely safe. Let's do background checks. Let's get these guys like, look, sign here and here. And I just imagine there's a fucking guy sitting there, like Stifler sitting there with a tranquilizer oh, gun. Sure. Just if Buddy gets too squirrely in the cage, he's just going to put a fucking dart in his neck. And it's like the amount, like the weird shit that people get into. Oh. But they're comfortable enough just like, at, like, shooting their shot it's like i almost admire it like going into a dm and seeing hey um you got some weird ones oh dude i've got erotic personal training the hey man can you do me a favor Yikes. and me being canadian i'm like yeah what is yeah, it dude absolutely. what do you want some money i'll send it to you can you carry me on your back for a mile? Oh, that's a fucking haul, man. And I was like, yeah, come on. Not on the first date, man. That's a big ask. A mile? That's the, on your – okay, on your back is a little bit like – I'm a, getting 1,500 steps a day here. You want me to <laughs> toss a, a smaller adult man on an already small adult man's back? Carry a mile down the road? That's crazy? A mile. That's, that's what, 1,600, 1,500 meters? Or no, uh, yeah, 1,500 meters. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to – here's another story. So I got a crazy – DM message prior to DMs existing on Instagram. This was a real life ask. That was crazy. So we got to tell this story. So uh, my buddy Mason, who does all my tattoos, he used to work in this area of Toronto that I now live in. It's near Parkdale. And I was getting a coffee once. And there was a guy there and he was in fishnets and a small Emily tank top from Hot Topic for our American listeners. And uh, he had very bloodshot eyes. So I was waiting for my coffee and being polite. I was like, hey, man, how are you? And he's like, oh, I'm doing pretty good. 
Uh, and he asked what I did, and I explained. I was like, oh, I'm a carpenter, actually. I'm building the, the building across the street. And I don't know why this was a good idea in my mind, but I went, what do you do? <laughs> it's a million-dollar <laughs> question, and right? And staring at him, it's like, you don't need to know. Right. And he told me that he's into underwater fellatio. That's a new one. But he does it in a hot tub, and hence why his capillaries are burst. So this guy's S and D for so long underwater. He's, he's he's getting the bends. He's coming he's up the with bends. <laughs> he's popping capillaries, he's popping capillaries. And I went, I went. That's a fucking niche. And he went. Niche for sure. He's like, it is a niche. But what sets me apart? And I was like, dude, you <laughs> stop. You're right. There's there. about a two football fields between you and everyone you've ever told this to. He goes, well, I offer accoutrements like Hennessy and fine nuts. And then I went. <laughs> so this guy's coming up with the charcuterie yeah. board. Is that it? <laughs> pull it up, pull it up with the the henny and the nuts. And I went. I don't need to ask what kind of fine nuts he right. offers because right. I don't need to see him. Yeah. And that was my experience at conversations you don't need to have with people you don't need to know. Right. Which is hence the DM slide. That is yeah. the The DM is literally young and or Queen and Bathurst in Toronto. Oh. That's the DM. Yeah. If you've ever been a Queen of Bathurst, it's like. Whenever anyone talks to you unsolicited, it's it's not going to be good. You know where they're coming yeah. through. Like when you get the like, if those of you and a lot of you do, you have like the business Instagram that sends the requests, right? Oh, and buddy. you always get the request, <laughs> and you go, I don't know if I'm clicking on this, and you do, and you never want to. No, the best is when the Im- Instagram blurs the image for your safety. Oh yeah, 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 dude, that's the elephant graveyard in your pride it's rock. The elephant it's- trunk <laughs> graveyard. <laughs> Like, look, anything the light touches on a post or something, that's fine. That's yeah. my. But this message request, once that hits 100 plus, I might as well just put a brick over that door and just fucking implode it. Like, I'm never going yeah. in there. There are people who have messaged me so many times that I can never answer them now. Oh, yeah. It's like, I just got to seal off this part of this, the, uh, like the, the spaceship, and it's just got to go. It's going to go off into oblivion. Like, it's... Every day it's something different, and every day I never get used to it. No, like normalizing that that like I don't know. Per, I understand to a certain degree perversions. Sure, don't get me wrong. I'm not clicking every related link. Like this, this looks like a like a rabbit hole. Like I'm gonna have to clear my search history yeah. after this one. I don't got time for this shit. But just the the rate and frequency in which people are inquiring about weirder and weirder things, oh. dude. The purchasing of used clothing that I've definitely sweat in. Oh, that's a good one. That's now. a con- that's a cottage industry. Are you kidding me? Like I could be rocking like Versace socks every day just because of people wanting to buy foot foot pictures. I don't get the feet. Mm, Not no. my thing. No, I've seen my own feet, and it doesn't it doesn't make me come. But um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there's a big thing going on for a while. Uh, a friend of mine uh, never got intw- intertwined with it. Uh, but requests for used gym socks. Yeah. That's a big one. The used gym socks. Yeah. When I was training at a boss, um, like a lot of powerlifters adopted the training and compression shorts thing. Oh. Not a big fan, but like Dan spearheaded that initiative. But it, it, Dan can wear whatever he wants. Well, when you got fucking 40 inch quads and you're pulling 400 kilos, it's like, all right. But the inquiries for, yeah, used gym equipment. The weird thing is the people who follow through with it. Like, I could never see myself at a post office mm-hmm. and filling out the customs form and going, yeah. what is it? It's my dirty socks. Like, that's not a PayPal transaction that's ever going to happen. And that's where I look at, that's where I look at the situation. And I, I don't fetish shame the but, asker, but I look differently at the guy who, like you said, the guy who agrees to it. Right. You want to shoot your shot and be like, dude, send me your skid marks. Weird. <laughs> but uh, it's cool, man. If you're the guy who's like, deal, how much? 50 bucks? You yeah. don't need that $50. No. Because at some point in your life, it's like somebody said to me, they're like, hey, don't ever shy away from making $100 because at some point in your life, you're going to think, I needed that 100 bucks. At some point in your life, you're going to think back and go, I never needed that $50. You know, and you know when that is? When the white unmarked van comes up next to you when you're walking down yeah. the street and be like, oh, fuck, I bet you this has something to do with the skid yeah. marks and the DM. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm trying to think of what like my what the greatest... DM of all time that I've gotten is. I think that crushing one was pretty the good. The crushing was pretty bad. That in a weird way, that was like I made it. It's like you made it. Oh now. yeah. You've you've somehow ascended to the ranks where people want you to just hug them. I'm, I I never inquired about the details. Again, I don't necessarily like you fetish shame, but at the same time, it's like 
I'm not inquiring a <laughs> second. Oh, you know what? Total lie. Did I tell you? Oh, no. Here we Dude. go. Dude. I can't. No, this is the greatest of all. For me, this was the weirdest. I had, and this was semi-recently, and I don't want to like implicate myself, although I guarantee you somehow I'm going to get in shit for this. I had a chick message me. And it's like, you don't know if it's real or not. And the message simply stated, my husband said it was okay if oh, you yeah. slept with me. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this I'm not engaging in this any further. So, like, it, it somehow ended up in my normal inbox and not in my request. It didn't end up in the elephant graveyard. So I opened it. And then, it's like, Instagram has a thing where you've seen it. I was like, well, like, like you don't pursue this. This is not a thing that you, you don't pull on this fucking – you don't pull on this thread. The next thing that was sent was mm. a video – from the husband saying that he was going to pay for my flight out to his wife. And I was like, I, and mm. I just, I, what do you, that was, that was, I had to sit with that one. I was yeah, like, this is where we're at. This is 2021 in a DM. Yeah. It's Mad Max. Enter the cuckle dome. <laughs> I, I just, I, I don't think I went on Instagram. You could probably find it where like I had a string. Like I try and post every day. I had a string of like four days where I just would pick up my phone and was like, and I was just like, I can't, I can't. If that's what's waiting on the other end of this fucking thing, I'm out. I'm done. Yeah. That was, that was, the, that was by far the worst. Yeah. It's the, it's a wild west of that bi bicycle spokes, people shooting their shot. Like it's just a jungle in there. Well, the weird thing now, and this is something that I think is, is rightfully so, like it's a good law to have in there, but. There's such indemnification around like revenge porn laws, yes. which is huge. And I think that's, that's really – that's a good thing to have because you don't want to be – you know, I've never sent a dick pic in my life, like just getting that on the record. But it's – I know people who that's, that's, that's their go-to. That's their move. They, I don't know if they should be forever punished for that. So I like the idea that that exists, but just I, I just can't. There's just I don't know what it is. I think it's a strong initial hand to play. Yeah. Where do you go from there? It's got to be downhill. You don't have anything stronger than that. Or if you do, I don't want to know about it. Well, that's the thing. Like, if that's not the strongest play you have, like, is it your butthole? Is that the be all end all? And like, I don't know where it goes. Like, if that's what, if that's your launching pad, like, is it the taint next? Nipples, dick, pussy, butthole. That's hold on, hold on. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. That was that Lundy was. Lundy ripped wait, that off wait, too wait, quick. Here just says, "Well, I need a footnote citation on this." It's just that's the law. It's common knowledge. You got Snapchat? No. Then you don't get it. I can't do Snapchat. Nipples, dick, pussy, butthole. Bingo. Mm. So that's the whose butthole? That's, that's the real question. Right, and there's no, there's not like a fingerprint, does it? <laughs> it's just, that could be anyone's. Yeah. Yikes! That's um, I, I that's good to know. This might be the most valuable thing we've ever offered our listeners. You got it? Yeah. Yeah, the, the old bikes, folks. That's uh, that's a tricky one. It's, it's a wild world out there, man. You got to keep your head on a swivel. Yeah. Um, did you want to jump to the point? Super Bowl <laughs> has came and went. We're just yeah. going to switch now. <laughs> yeah, Always, yeah. I want to talk about greatest. That's what sparked the oh, greatest of all time. About. So in the greatest DMs of all time. If you have any good DMs, when we post this up on Instagram, leave in the comment section like the best the DMs best DM you've ever, ever gotten. Because like w ours are relatively tame because they're either coming from podiatrists in Florida or they're <laughs> coming from like really forward people with open relationships. But I could not imagine being a female. No. And like the DMs they must get. Because like, there's no there's no subtle way to approach it. The ones that start off very like cordial, because I've read a few like you know we have friends that are that are popular in the fitness space and females on the internet, and they start off very cordial, and it's like it it's the shift in tone is so stark, stark. and you're just like wow well, how did it start here and end here? But if you have any good DM stories, put them up in the in the comment section on this Instagram post up on the RX Radio IG. So that was my greatest of all time. Yours was carry a mile. Yeah, a, I I'd guess. rather crawl through sh fucking the trench at Shawshank than carry another man for a mile on my yeah. back. Because you know he's not wearing clothes, right? Like that's, <laughs> no. That's a foregone conclusion with that inquiry. Yeah. It's like this guy's ass naked. No. Um, but Super Bowl came and went. We have a new conversation now about greatest athlete of all time. Okay. Brady. Thoughts? Are we, are we saying like in their sport or of all athletes Well, of all and time? so this is where I struggle with this conversation because it's like – there, there's so many. First off, do you, I think you need to define athleticism, right? Mm -hmm. No one ever, no one ever defines athleticism in a meaningful way. And I think once you start to look at in a, at athleticism through different facets, yeah, 
your favorite athlete is just how you rank the facets of athleticism, right? So whether it's leadership, whether it's actual physical prowess, whether mm-hmm. it's, you know, performing in the clutch. I think when you break it down like that, it can be easier to compartmentalize who's the best. But in maybe let's do it this way. Because obviously the conversation around best athlete of all time actually has nothing to do with the physiological attributes as we know athletics to be. Like not speed, a, not a Brady's in the conversation. Right, speed, power, agility, strength, acuity, rhythmicity, yeah. all these things that we, we attribute from like a physiological perspective to being a good athlete in just dominance in their sport. Jordan, LeBron, Gretzky, Tiger Woods. Yeah. I don't know. What else comes to mind? Jordan, LeBron, Tiger Woods, Gretzky, Serena Williams would come to mind. Okay. Lundy, who you got? Well, what about what about the male side of that? Rafa? Nadal? Federer. Federer? There's too many football players to name like yeah. you know, there's there's just you're you're a good quarterback, good defensive player. Okay. It's kind of it's kinda of like what you guys are talking about. It's 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 depending on what you put like highest in your ranking right. system. Well I think football be football has to be quarterback. Right, as far as like if the athleticism conversation greatest of all time is pure like imposing dominance over like an ability for someone to just take over the game, right? Like a like a punter is not never going to be the best athlete of all time. <laughs> they can't take over the game based off that criteria. In in order to control a game, yeah, I mean you get Rodgers in the mix, you get Brady, you get yeah. You know, I don't really like the older guy. It's a different game. That's the other thing. Is you right. go eras across and generation. It's, fucking, it's messing me up now. I can't even think. But that, what about outside? What about baseball? Jeter. You Jeter? I mean, baseball never enters into the conversation. Juice or no juice? Oh, oh juice. Juice. Come, juice. Come on, Ken Get the Griffey. Fuck out of here. I think yeah, I think see, all I like baseball Gr- players should be on juice. See, I feel like Griffey from a, like a pure athleticism standpoint. Griffey's yeah. go, Griffey holds weight. Griffey has fucking wheels, man. Yeah, dude. But I think so. I think my list for ability to control the game, I mean, Gretzky's got to be up there. I would put Gretzky and Ovechkin. Ovechkin, I saw this one video once where he was on the bench. He grabbed a guy on his team, threw him on the bench, jumped on the ice. He saw a play before it happened and hopped on the ice and scored a goal. That's, a, that's an acuity and, a, and like a yeah. mentality around the game, if that's how we're defining it in this category. But then it also comes down to this idea of like strong versus weak link sports. Right? And I think that's Correct. a conversation that never gets happened when we start to talk about greatest athletes of all time. Like basketball is a strong link game. You throw a fucking one thousand percent. You throw D Wade and LeBron on the court. It's like guess guess who's bringing the championship home to Florida? Like obviously yeah. that's going to win. But you could put Ronaldinho, Messi, Pele on a roster. But if you got the fucking sweeper. Killian Hamilton yeah. holding it down in his fucking short. It's like the, you're gonna get you're gonna get exploited all day, right? Yeah. A lesser roster, soccer falls to the weak link, where something like basketball ascends to the, the strong link, link, right? So I think I don't know. For me, an ability to control the game, I think Brady's got to be up there now. Yeah, and I I don't know because like this is the hard thing when you go sport to sport, right? Like where I'm not gonna argue that Brady isn't the goat in football. Uh, but then you look at football itself and you look at like, well, what organizations has he been a part of? Who has he been surrounded by? Right. But like he obviously left Belichick and still won. So I guess there's an argument that he still is great. Then you go, all right, to, to your point about sports, individual versus team. Because Phelps has to be in there somewhere. Yeah. Right? Bolt has to well, be in there I was going to say, those, were, those are my big three. My big three are Serena Williams, Phelps, Usain Bolt. Okay. See, I think – for physical attributes, as we think at, of athleticism from like a maybe more scientific perspective, those three would probably make their way in there. Serena Williams had a kid, came back, and dummies people all day long. Yeah, she's just different, man. And that's, like that's an argument no one's having when we have this athletic conversation. Like, yeah. she's a mom. And I'm, this is not me no, dissing No, 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 mom. for sure. But it's like, imagine, okay, hey, you got to take nine months off, put on 30 pounds, yeah. come back after, like, what we can call a, a major traumatic surgery, surgery. Right. And then come back. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think. And then dummy people that were babies when you won your first title. Yeah. Her, her, her reign over female tennis is, the game is unparalleled. I wouldn't play against her. You ever seen that picture when she was dating Common? It looks like he's walking ten feet behind her. <laughs> she's got the angle. She's uh, he looks like a zip. T- she he looks like a zip tie, and she's a pair of off whites. Yeah, she's um, she's a unit. Unit. She's probably one of the most. And here's the thing: 
if you've never been in a sport where something moves at 100 miles an hour <laughs> We drive 100 miles an hour every yeah. now and then, you know, especially shouts out Florida. Everyone drives like 160 <laughs> miles an hour. But it's like if you haven't seen a projectile Moving coming at, at, you, at you at that speed, at that speed that's different. Yeah. Like that's, that's a different game because it's like now it's, yeah, you can be, if she has bigger quads than me, <laughs> but like to be able to react and like return and, and return faster, like that's insane. Yeah. It's all yeah. I don't. I never. I never considered tennis, or at least never considered um, her in that conversation. But I think it's that. That's definitely worthy of mention. Yeah. More so. I don't want to say more so, but like as justifiable as you can say, Brady as justifiable yeah. as you can say, LeBron or Jordan. Yeah. She's a. She's an absolute freak of nature. And I think like, and then what I look at in sports too is like, do we define? like the goaded athletes is only those who are the most winningest or those who change the game. Okay. Now define change the game. Like Allen Iverson would be a great example. Okay. Allen Iverson, statistically not very good shit shooting percentage in the thirties. Couldn't hit a three, never won. But Allen Iverson changed like the one spot in basketball. Yeah. He created this like versatile ball handling, like shooting the mid, like the mid two jumper like that. He defined and what we see as the point guard of today is definable via Iverson then. Yeah, I mean you could make an argument then like Michael Vick, right? Hundred well hundred percent. The first there's no Cam Newton if there's no Michael Vick. Yeah, well the game wouldn't allow for it, right? Like once you had kind of the double threat. There's no QB, talk and run. Yeah. No. Uh uh Vick, um McNabb, Donovan McNabb yeah, on the yeah, Philadelphia Phillies. Eagles with Terrell Owens. Like yeah. that was a dynamic duo that changed the shape of the game. Yeah, and that, I think that's always my favorite conversation is like, because if anyone's ever played a team sport at the very least, there's always the second man. There's always a Pippin or a Ku coach, right? Yeah. That made that, that made that guy. Like, you know, whether it was like an enforcer playing with, uh, playing with Gretzky or with Crosby or like Malkin and Crosby, right? Like, would Crosby be, Cros like, yeah, Crosby dishes the rock. Like, Crosby's got, Crosby gets more assists than most of the top scorers get goals, and he gets more goals on top of that. But he's got to fucking – someone's got to – if he passes the puck to someone, they have to put the puck in the fucking net. Right? So duos are also another conversation I think is worth having. If we're just counting championships, it becomes kind of empirical now, right? Like Brady's got to be up there, right? He's got seven now, seven rings. He yeah. has more than some teams have. Yeah. Like Brady alone, he's like the state of California. The state of California is the fifth largest economy, or at least it was, the fifth largest economy in the world. Yeah. It's like him alone is a stand. And I think the fact that he was able to move teams yes. from, and in football too, it's not like it's not like switching ping pong partners. No. Right. Like you gotta you gotta rally, fifty plus guys on a roster. Like and that's a. And football is football is like in a lot of ways, almost similar to what basketball used to be is like dynastic in nature, right? Like this is a, is a team that's built year upon year to be that team, right? It's right. not as, it's not as much as basketball maybe is today or in hockey in some ways where like you see these people switch at a high rate, like Belichick is the Patriots. The Patriots are Belichick. That unit moves as one. So like you see Brady there for so long it, in a, in a sport that's so dynastic in nature to move from one team to the next and still be that guy is huge, right? Well, I think that's the Peyton Manning argument. Can we talk about Brady without talking about Manning, even if he didn't win? Like, him and, him and his brother, influential. In, influential in changing the game? I think in a lot of ways. I don't know, man. I've never heard a good argument for having Manning on the on the take as far as best ever. I don't know. It's, it's hard, though. Yeah, I don't know. I think, for me, I'm not a big football guy in general, right? Because I think not maybe to steer the conversation more towards the dynamics of athleticism. Right, like who is the most capable human being when it comes to output, when it comes to when we think of those skills of athleticism or those tenets, strength, power, and agility, endurance, all of these different physiological, um, like physiological manifestations that athletes have in certain capacities based on certain sports, who is the most capable human being in the world? As far as Us Usain Bolt, you think 100%. Okay, because he's tall, because he's literally the right. fastest thing to ever exist on the planet Earth. Yeah, and if you wanted him to be good at a sport, he's got it. But he's he's kind of one tracked, though. You know, like you think so. Hold on, here's the argument, and I've had this with Junta before. And Junta thinks that 
his cauliflower ear potato eating Midwest ass could take LeBron in a wrestling match. No. It's like, dude, you'd get fucking pimp slap. No. Yeah, well, I I think I don't think Usain Bolt has the capacities to coordinate and like you threw Usain Bolt a basketball, he's not figuring it out. You don't think so? Okay. Who's get is Usain Bolt going to be as close to uh, LeBron at playing basketball as LeBron could be at running uh, like a like a fast hundred. A fast hundred or Usain Bolt hundred? Well, uh, you think he's fucking? Do you think Usain can do with a ball what LeBron can? It's a skill thing, though. Yeah, I think I I don't know. I feel Bolt is such a specimen for the sport that he dominates. That to think that he's multifaceted. He was the, one of the greatest cricket players in Jamaica. Yeah, but it, cricket. We're talking about sports here. What Still are we different, doing? Yeah, no, sport. I can't with cricket, man. I lived in Australia for six months. But I mean, but that's the thing is like, did he? Do we know? Did he ever have another implement in his hand? Sure. But you said so. Let's move. Let's move it more close to what he could do because okay. basketball is a completely different dynamic. Right. Usain Bolt, soccer player. Absolutely not. Hundred percent. No way. No chance. Really? You think s- if Usain Bolt had the the gifted nature that he has, right? But put all his energy into playing soccer with the same determination, dusts people. Really? You think so, dusts um Now like are we saying he'd crack like a like a FC Barca roster? Are we saying he'd be like C Cap, Ronaldinho, Cristiano Ronaldo? I think I think he could have been a Ronaldo. Really? For sure, That's man. That's so interesting to me. Because it's hard. Because cultural, like, why is it? Like, th- this is an epigenetic argument, right? Like, w- your genetics put a bullet in the chamber, but your training pulls the trigger. Your environment pulls the trigger. Why is it that this small... Have you been to Jamaica? You been to Jamaica? Dude, it's... I mean, it's a great place. I've been there a handful of times. But it's odd. Like, it's odd that to think as you drive through Jamaica... Yeah. That this place is, for whatever reason, turning out the fastest human beings on, on the, the planet. planet. Like, is it the what? Is it the fuck? I don't get it. Like, what about this place? Is it environment? Is are they at a different altitude? Like, is the sand something special? Like, that's crazy to me. But I don't. I don't know. I don't think. Or you could say the same thing about Europe. Like, why is it that Brazil turns it's out as many soccer, soccer, soccer after players soccer as they? Player. Do? Right, so how much of it is like I think when we see superlatives in their sport, especially when it's individual sports, it's a perfect combination of the right caliber bullet in the right size chamber with the right person pulling the trigger. Because everyone in Jamaica is like, especially now, like that'll be set into 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 being for generations because there's Bolt, because there's a Safa Powell, because there's Johan Blake, Blake. <laughs> right? You know, Johan Blake has got his own fucking like I think it's a Hublot. Yeah. Dude, he's got his own Hublot, and the the design on the face of the watch is based off of how his fingers present when yeah. he runs. It's like, man, I've ne- I'll never be that good at anything. That they're gonna design a Hublot based off of how I do it. But I just I don't know. It's always hard to n- normalize and find a common denominator in which to equate all these two. But I think it's it's always interesting to have the conversation of like what it, what what do people value in athleticism, right? Like, can we talk about CrossFit? No. No? Why not? Cancel that. Dude, I don't know, man. Like, when it comes to pure athletic ability, like, as far as coordination, endurance, pain, dude, how, what about cyclists? Right? Like, how, part, if part of athleticism is handling pain, cyclists and mid distance runners, Prefontaine. I put yeah. Prefontaine up there. And, like, Prefontaine's a tough one because he was never the most winningest, right? But the, from a mindset perspective, he's like, I might not win, but you're going to have to bleed to beat me. Yeah. You know, the best pace is a suicide pace, and today feels like a good day tonight. It's like, dude, you're running around a circle. You're doing yeah. foot NASCAR. Can't like, what can the fuck is going on? Turn left. But it's just, if I respect anyone that can approach that level, or that any, I can respect anyone who approaches an endeavor with that level of intensity, right? So the mindset conversation around athleticism, but I think sheer output, mid distance, or a long distance cyclist, like, Tour de France. Oh yeah, we we're gonna look at Lance. We're we gonna throw Lance in there. I feel like Lance got a fucking rough go, man. No, but go. Lance got a rough go. He didn't, cause he's a piece of shit. <laughs> what do you mean? No, dude, take drugs. But have you ever seen the documentaries on Lance? No. 
just dumping people. What do you mean? All of the interviews from everyone on on the postal team, like on the U.S. postal really? team, really, just saying he was a a piece of shit, was going behind their back doing drugs, uh, indemnifying people by making them do drugs to get on the team against their will, or they were cut if they wouldn't do the drugs. The Let doc- me verify. Sounds right. Sounds right. Beauty. There's like there, I think <laughs> we I can't don't have re- internet. So. <laughs> uh, I can't remember. There's a documentary. It was on Netflix. There's like three documentaries on Lance, but him as a person. Yeah, eh? he's a bad person. I'm going on record. Like I don't care if you're a Lance fan. Sure. Lance is a bad person. And dude, his cameo in Dodgeball was clutch. Though. Yeah, yeah. I just I don't know. I, I like. I'm not against the drug conversation. We talked about this before, dude. Baseball. Yeah. Dude, fired up. Juice yeah. Them all up. yeah, go Juice, right over Mark that. Mark McGuire, fucking... turkey neck, swing it. for the fences. <laughs> Shout out, Greg's on. Yeah, uh, yeah. I just, I don't know, man. I struggle with, like, I struggle with not including him just because of the feet. Like, let's just talk about the feet. Like showing, like throwing a shot put, throwing a javelin, high jump. Like how yeah. difficult and how much coordinated strength do you need? Decathletes. Oh, have insane. you ever seen biathlons? Have you ever seen this beauty? Oh, is that the gun one? It's the James Bond Olympic. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's a James Bond tryout for the next 007. The cross-country ski and shoot? Are you that crazy? Why it. is that Dude, even a sport? But I'm not, I can't. Remember when we were shooting Tannerite with yeah. ARs on the side yeah. of the road in Florida? Like, I couldn't control my breath. I had to walk 10 foot back from the target. This I guy's just fucking skied across the Pyrenees, and he's got to pick off a target from 100 yards out. I don't know. I think it's funny, like what, what's kind of coming to light in this conversation when we talk about these goaded athletes is what we look at, I think, is you have two qualities. You have some epigenetic makeup that makes someone good for the sport that they do, but probably could make them versatile across sports. And you combine that with whatever intangible led them to become the best. Like Kobe Bryant, RIP, shout out 24, slash number eight. Right. Kobe Bryant arguably one of the greatest basketball players of all time, most influential I'll basketball players of all time. Sure. Um, he called his trainer once and he said, listen, man, I need to practice. Like we need to go to the gym. And the trainer's like, all right, I'll meet you there tomorrow morning. And the trainer's like, I knew Kobe has crazy work ethic. So I showed up at five thirty at the gym. Kobe was drenched in sweat. He'd been there since 3 a.m. shooting. But that so you're calling that an intangible? That's an in, yeah. You don't think that's genetic, dude? Ninety nine people aren't going to do that, right? But Kobe's going to do that, and that's the hard part, man. Like I think genetics, I think genetics code for work ethic. Yeah, like that's a that that could be it as well. But I think that's like even if that's gen- genetic, then that is the epigenetics of the greatest right. athlete. But just give them a give them a utility. Yeah. Well, maybe too. Like, and this is something that I think is. You like unanimous across all good athletes is there's a mental attrition as Kobe yeah. exhibited, but there's a physical attrition, right? Like D Rose, well, but look at like let's look at the other side of the spectrum, like D Rose, right? Like yo, he's fucking Samuel Jackson in Unbreakable. Like this guy's made of yeah. fucking glass. <laughs> what is his Achilles made of? Porcelain? Like yeah. what is this guy doing? And like what two years ago he threw up sixty in a game? Yeah, but you know no team will touch him now because he's fucking he's he self implodes. Right? So how, how much of it is? Yeah, ninety nine guys won't or ninety nine of a hundred won't do what Kobe did and do the fucking two a.m. gassers, but. Maybe what if ninety five did and four wouldn't or four didn't survive and there's just one Kobe left. I think that's really and that's the that's the Russian Olympic team model of molding athletes. Is it's just a numbers thing. Yeah. Let's just let's put a sifter out of stress and let's see who's left at the end of it. Because I think and there's something to it. You, you hear stories about the Chinese weightlifting teams. You hear story about like Russian gymnastics. And so like, we're going to take a bunch of four-year-olds. Cuba. Right. Yeah. We're going to take them from your family and we're going to put you through the ringer and we're, we're going to come out with – there's going to polish diamond in there somewhere mm-hmm. that's going to get hardened under time and pressure. And and maybe that's it, right? Maybe that's how we find it. We can sit back and talk about the smart ways to do it. And you can you can make the guy in you know lane six a little bit faster. But that guy in lane one is there for a reason. Like that guy in there, that guy in the middle lane, the guy on top of the podium. It's like, it's almost to the point where like, what do you tell kids? Like, if you're not Sidney Crosby, knew at the age of fourteen that he was Sidney Crosby. Yeah. Right. Like he started working with Andy O'Brien. I spoke with Andy about his time with Sidney, and they still work together. But it's like everyone knows, right? Like everyone, and you, you, we grow up around kids like fucking Wilson there out in out in La Salle, you know. 
this kid was dusting everyone in baseball, dusting everyone on the ice, dusting everyone in football. He's like, all right, well, what do I want to do? Take your pick. But he's not, I don't know, he's not like, um, I'm trying to think of like one of the greatest, he's like a wide receiver, who would be the greatest wide receiver of all time or running back or whatever. Like he's not a Barry Sanders or anything like yeah. that. He's not necessarily a household name. But it's, you know, in defining these characteristics, it's like, it, I think attrition might be one of the ones that's most overlooked. It's yeah. like, who can just survive? Take it? Yeah, like LeBron. LeBron. 100. And I think that's because it, the game is bigger now. James Harden wasn't playing in the NBA when in 98. There was no Hardens around. Right? Like, who were the big guys in the NBA back in the day? Well, you had, like, all your staples, right? So if you look at that, like, 2000s era, you would have had... Like the Wallaces, but would that was have been... late two thousands, right? Oh, well, like, that was like er, like like mid two thousands. But Jerry like... Stackhouse, maybe Stackhouse on the Pistons, he was big. Yeah, like but... you had Rashid, you had Ben, you had Jack. Yeah, like Kemp would have been like come like falling out at that time too. You'd have like Matumbo, but you look at a different game now where it's not that people are, it's not that everybody is bigger, but that bigger players are better at the game. That's scary. So. It's filtering out the smaller players. Sure. They're, they're not finding bigger guys. It's bigger guys are just, just deciding to be better at their game, right? Dude, Dustin Bufflin reported a camp one year at 280. Can you imagine 280 on ice? That's a fucking wrecking ball. That's insane. I think at one point, Sean Kemp was weighing over 260 That's in the insane. NBA yeah. and dunking on people. Yeah, that hurts. That That's guy comes insane. down on your ankle, career over. I don't care if you're D Rose or you got Adamantium. You seen you're Shaq fucking in the done. gym doing chest fly on the cable machine? No. Basically yanking the free motion off the ground. That's hilarious. Like yeah. that guy's a unit. And I guess that's that's really like, and big guys never really enter into the conversation of greatest of all time. No. But I think they should in the sense that they're a filtering process. They're the final. They're the bosses that keep yeah. that that pursue the dragon that holds that gold egg. Because it's like, look, Gretzky's got to navigate around fucking. Uh, I don't know who'd be like Donald Brashear. That might be a generation too late. Or they, he's going to navigate around maybe like a Scott Stevens or something yeah. like that. Like there's someone Stevens way, Pronger, dude, ready to McKinnis. fucking stand you up on the blue Probert. Line. Oh, dude, shout right. out, P, man. shout out Pour Southern some Ontario, out for the Probert, homie, man. I was I was a block away from Pro, like I live a block away from where they uh, had his funeral, man. Yeah. Like that guy was a dangerous dude. On, but how many guys? I always remember when Scott Stevens got Paul Correa with his head down. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> what the hell? Northbound on a southbound freeway. Paul Correa could have cured cancer. You don't have two brain cells rubbed together to make a third anymore. Like, but that's part of the game, right? These are these are the gatekeepers to excellence in the sport. Right? Like there's a guy, there's Paul Amalu. There's probably there's a few guys that could have been earmarked for greatness. Where the flying fucking Samoan, he gets the running start before the ball snaps, and he's airborne before the ball's even in the fucking QB's hands, and he's just gonna murder you. Yeah, dude. like you're already into next week, and like we haven't even talked about mixed martial arts yet. How many guys just got clipped? Right, just took one on the chin and was like, "Man, that guy could have been it." Yeah, that guy could have. And we see it, dude. Not even in the professional ranks. How many kids do we knew growing up that? Got hurt, right? Like, ah, man, I got red shirt in my second year, NCAA, tore the ACL. It's like, ah, oh, this kid had such promise, yeah. you know? And sometimes it's what you tell the kid so he doesn't feel bad. But other times it's like, you know, I remember some kids. Do you remember? So Lundy and I went to the same high school. I remember watching Matt Ward run a sub five minute mile with our Paul Majal's fucking shoes on and, and a dart in <laughs> <dart Yeah>. his <laughs> mouth. Yes. <laughs> and it's like, this kid was in the 10th grade wearing fucking harp shoes that were like two sizes too big, had a fucking dart in his mouth. It was like watching Vince Vaughn hold the iron cross <laughs> all day, baby. And it's like, what is, what about this guy? Right? How, like, I don't think we've seen, we've scratched the surface of the greatest of all time in any, in any, because our filtering processes, there's just too many. There's too many people not getting a shot. Yeah. There's too many people like you no know, not getting a look. There's too many people who are getting hurt. So, you know, there's too many people who don't have the resources. I think in the next like 100 years, man, we're gonna look at you know 958 as like you know the fastest 100. You know, 1919 is the fastest 200, and we're gonna be like, man, they're moving at snail space, yeah. like like or whatever Phelps records and all that. I think 
once you start to see where the wheels fall off in the conversation of greatest all time, it's like, man, if we can start to fix even a few of these and we can get a few more people sifting through this process, like we're going to, we're going to see a major change in, in the landscape of sports. But I also like, I, I also think about it like Lundy brings up that great point of like, you look era to era and like what might have made great players great. And like you're saying is like, but does someone need to come before you? And unfortunately, do they get knocked out of the argument? Like, I don't think Jordan would have never not been, like, obviously in contention to be greatest of all time in basketball. But did it take Jordan getting bullied by the Pistons and beat up to be arguably the greatest of all time in basketball? Like, did he need to go get beat up on the court to go get jacked and build that resiliency to, like, lose the idea that he was invincible. So, like, you need a catalyst. Yeah. Right? And maybe the catalysts are worth the sh- worth a shout-out in the conversation. Yeah. Like, how many how many players went head-to-head with Kobe as their dream, and Kobe stared them down and talked shit to them? And what did that game do for their career? Right. It's Iverson going head-to-head with, with Michael Jordan, and Iverson crossing Jordan, breaking yeah. his ankles. Because Iverson looked at Jordan and went, I don't know who the fuck you are. Right. And just crossed him. And Iverson remembers before the game being so nervous to play Jordan. But he was like, the minute I got on the court, I was like, fuck this. I'm crossing him. Yeah. I don't know. The, the catalyst conversation is an interesting one to have because there's, I think there's so many unsung heroes in sports. Like yeah. There's so many people like, and even cross court. Like I think, and that's one of the reasons I like Prefontaine is if you ask any athlete at like the top of their game, I would say the most represented inspirational athlete of all time for people cross discipline would likely be, and maybe I'm reaching because he's one of my favorite athletes, but his story reached me and fuck if I know anything about running, I would want run a mile, run fucking five, whatever the fuck. Like, I don't want to do that, but that mindset of kind of like what you said with AI of like, dude, like I'm second, I'm on the court. It's like, I don't give a fuck who you are. We're break, we're breaking ankles here. Yeah. So I think there's so many like, catalyzing people there's so many catalyzing personalities that are worth at least an honorable mention that never get a shake right they never get that day in the sun but they're as important to the equation as anything else as a catalyst is so you know we can, we can see the final result we can see that reaction that that summation of the skill of that but what made that possible right so like i mean i i i, I struggle with tiger woods being on that list personally yo did you see that car accident he yeah. got in brood we talk about that man. for a second yeah his legs destroyed actually though yeah yeah he what? went he, like a hospital in la they had to put pins in and fucking titanium titanium well he's what? definitely yo. the worst driver of all time <laughs> he's definitely yeah. the worst formula one athlete <laughs> the worst uber guy to get in the car with man <laughs> Could Fuck you me. tiger behind the wheel that's not a five star. His, ex, his ex-wife threw the passenger side <laughs> right she would she take a title yeah. take a title to yeah. the spokes said the what was he driving he was actually driving like one of the Genesis rental cars for that like tournament that he was hosting. Oh my God. Was he driving a Hyundai? He he was he was cruising for sure. Like there's unless he fell asleep or was just flying down the road or was <laughs> fucked up. Dude. They said he didn't have any like alcohol or drugs in his system, but yo, who knows? That thing was mangled. Yeah, dude, Santa. That's man. insane. He had to be going a clip, bro. Like that was I saw it was like the other yesterday, two days ago. I don't know. He was flying. But that's the thing I struggle with. I struggle with golf as as a as a sport that he can even enter into the conversation. But have you played golf? But that's the thing, it's, right? It's have you ever done skill- math? Have yeah. you ever done math? It's very skill based as opposed to like being Correct. an athletic person right. and mental. So what we decide to put on the pedestal of like the best attributes of a human, right? That determines us. Like so you could take like Bo Jackson and Deion Sanders and oh, like, yeah. they played two sports professional level sports. They played in the NFL. And they played in the MLB. Are the, they the best ever? At the all-star level. Yeah. yeah. Bo Jackson in both. Yeah. Deion okay. Sanders took a helicopter to the game. <laughs> yeah. That's what you do. Kobe used to take a chopper to fucking Staples. You're not sitting in L.A. traffic dude, trying to get to the game. No R- way. R.I.P. Yeah, dude. The Kobe combo's tough, man. Like, I, and, you know, I don't want to fucking slander. Like, I was definitely a fun athlete to watch. But, you know, athletes' behavior on the field goes a, or off the court goes away pretty quickly when they die young. Do we not forget about some of the allegations that Kobe had against him? And again, like I don't want to throw shade and I don't want to fucking get heat back to this, but like if you're gonna sit here and fucking torch Lance, I'm sure there's some chicks in some bar bathrooms that are saying a different story. I'm hey, just saying, it was, I'm it just was, saying the Kobe thing was thrown out. 
Oh, so we're told. So we're just ignoring the court of public opinion. Yo, OJ got th- like that. That case got thrown out. That that glove didn't fit, and we did a quit. Dude, I never I'm said the juice saying. wasn't the best. Hey, no cell phone cameras. So yeah, yo, that's, that's a, and that's a real that's a real different generation, right? Well, like, that's, that's the Wilt Chamberlain Chamberlain argument. Like, was the scorecard how many baskets he got or how many chicks he slammed? Like, <laughs> he was the stilt. He well, was the I don't stilt. know. I don't know what stilt we're talking about here. But, I don't, I don't know, know. but like, dude, that's a whole other podcast. But that's the idea of like the the art like the artist versus the person, right? Like Chuck Berry invented rock and roll. Okay. Chuck Berry's also transporting uh, underage women across state lines and putting uh, cameras in bathrooms at fried chicken restaurants. Is Chuck Berry not the father of rock and roll? Are yeah. you going to cancel him out? Is it Little Richard now? Uh, yeah, dude. I'm. So that's the thing. I uh, funny. I have this argument with my mom all the time because she's such a Michael Jackson fan. Right, mm. but there's Michael Jackson, the artist, and then there's Michael Jackson, the Macaulay Culkin, right? Like, and that's, uh, I, it's it's hard. And as an athlete, or failed athlete, or former athlete, or never was, it's like you want to be able to separate it because there is a certain level of dedication that, and to a certain point, when you see those, the people ascend to that level, it's like maybe this is maybe this is just a side effect of being the best. Maybe that no one, no one can fight it. Like I want to think so badly that Tom Brady has got bodies in the walls that they're gonna find out he's just Ed Gein motherfuckers. Dude, this, hold on. Did we talk about this? Can we, has no one ever discussed that Tom Brady dropped an N bomb on TV and no one, and, and everyone act like it never happened? Yeah. How good is this guy? I think in your ability to skirt social scrutiny, that's it. He wins. He also kissed his son on the lips. Right he's, on the a, oh, he's a lip so, kisser dude, of the children. Ed like, Gein. I can't. What are you, Joey B? Like, I get can't. the fuck out of here with this <laughs> lip kissing kid shit. Come I on. Can't, I can't go to him after that. Naked, he weirds naked, me ma- out, Naked bro. massage kiss kissing incident. I he's got sponsored by Uggs. Done. You fucking, you passion your goat card when you get like the fucking moleskin slippers or whatever the fuck. Like, I don't know. I just, I, I want, the thing is like I want Brady to be the best. You got to have an edge. But the thing about Tiger, and albeit like not my favorite, at least he had an edge, right? Like he had something. Yeah. Yeah, it's just nothing. it's just weird to me. Like crazy dad, Brady's too perfect. I think that's what that's what it makes him unlike. It makes him unlikable. It makes him not of kin, right? Like he's not even a person. And if you ever talk to anyone from Mass, anyone from the American Northeast, they do treat him like a god because yeah. he does seem to have like I would say his ascension as a as an anonymous, omnipotent creature when it comes to sports is unparalleled. Because he's so unreachable. Both like, you know, he doesn't, yeah, I'm sitting here eating avocado ice cream, talking to Gronkowski. Ha, ha, ha. It's like, no, you're not. Yeah. Fuck you, you're not. Sitting there on your fucking $300 ice foam roller making TB12 money. Like, get out of here. What are you actually doing at night, bro? Yeah. Like, what kind of 50 shades of fucking Brady you got going on in that house? Like, there's, it, we, I need him to be more real for him to be the greatest. And I think if he did exhibit that, I think, in my mind, it would solidify him as the greatest of all time. But he's not, hu- he's not a human being. You know what I mean? He's too proper. He's too, like, he doesn't exhibit any quality of any character trait that comes as a side effect of being world famous and untouchable. Yeah, I, it's, it's weird. Like, I find the quarterback argument for greatest athlete of all time very hard. Because, like, if you're a quarterback, you're a golfer to me. Like, it's skill-based. You're protected by a lot of guys who put their lives on the line. And when I look at what Brady does, and it's like, what does he have, seven championships? Okay. Serena Williams got like 23 titles. Is Serena not better? But how many, cha- how many titles do you get a year versus how many, title sh- how many championship shots do you get a year? At, she, right? She can win the Grand Slam. It went four, right? You go, you go Aussie, French. But, uh, if, but if we went year for year, she's, want, she's been winning us for a longer period of time. I mean, I don't, I don't think the argument stands because it's like in a golf, like to say quarterbacking is like golf, it's like, yeah. Dude, if I'm in a foursome and I'm like Fred Couples, Tiger Woods, VJ Singh, and fucking um, uh, what's his name, the drunk guy, John Daly. <laughs> yeah. It's like if I'm VJ, <laughs> drunk guy. And if, if I'm VJ, I gotta post up and I gotta make sure fucking you know John Daly doesn't take a run while Tiger's working the short game. Like he's chipping from the rough. It's like that's a whole different game, right? Like best ball means something totally different. If you gotta block out John Daly's drunk ass because he's trying to take Tiger Woods' head off from the fucking. But I, I think that falls on the system with which Brady lives in, right? Like he's got 
dudes who are laying their life down to make sure that he can throw that ball. He's got an eye on the other side of that ball catching it. Right. So where does he land in the greatest but here's athlete the thing. of all time? I think he doesn't exist. Dudes, but you tell you what, those guys who are who are taking those licks on the front line are taking more licks for Brady than anyone else because they they got faith that homie's fucking taking him to the promised land. Yeah. Right? Like if you're behind center and I'm and and I'm fucking protecting you and I got to I got to put my faith in Killian to get us to Super oh, yeah, Bowl. It's, it's like, you know, they, well, well, I just saved myself a head injury on that one. It's like, yeah, yeah you do take one for the team. So, like, to to inspire and rally that number of players on a roster, I think, is worth. But to me, like, I don't enter in Brady necessarily the best of all time because he's not a human being. Yeah, Which just, is maybe that does make him the best of all time. But for me, it's like, why why him? Why is he so different? Why is he not as why is he not descended to some sort of you know, there's no news story. There's no there's no fucking driving your Hyundai Genesis into the stratosphere. <laughs> like, there's nothing. He's perfect. I think, like, this conversation could obviously get me banned from the internet. But, like, I think it's also, like, within the sport that he plays, who he is, and what you said is all of these acts, these social, in some ways, atrocities that are inadmissible somehow in the court of social opinion right. that he gets away with. That have allowed him to be who he is. Okay. Drops the end bomb, says a bunch of weird shit in another interview. The MAGA shit. Let's the, talk about I was the- just gonna say the MAGA stuff with like Trump, the kissing his kid on the lips. Take another athlete in another sport that maybe is not held up by a dude like Goodall yeah, who's got everything behind him as to be a guy who's maybe not the most socially responsible. Yeah. It's like he's in a sport insulated by guys who want Brady to be the best. Sure. You know what I mean? But he's in. I think he's he's also in the perfect position to be in a country who needs that. Like they need. Like Brady has been chosen to be a god. Yeah. And like I don't. And again, like you talk to anyone from New England, and they're just the dumbest people to talk to. You try to talk slower. And Tom Brady is to them a god, and they've been sold this idea that he is. And maybe he is. Maybe he's every bit as Ned fucking Flanders as he comes off of the internet. Oh, but it's that. like, dude, when when you're dropping the end bomb with the A. So, and that's what you're doing coming down the tunnel? Yeah. What's going on behind closed doors, man? Like, and I just be that guy. Like, I want to know that guy. I want to know that you're – because he's unattainable to me. Like, he's unattainable. I don't get – he smiles. And I'm like, those are fucking caps or veneers. Nothing about you seems real. You're a fucking – you're Tupac at Coachella. Like, you're a projection. You're not a real person, you know? Like, he has every other duck in a row, but he's literally – there's no blemish in that. There's nothing woven into the Brady tapestry that goes – there's no Cindy Crawford mole on the nose going, oh, yeah, that's, that's a blemish that actually makes you more attractive as an athlete. He's just too perfect. I don't know. I don't like it. So, quick, your, based off of your standards, greatest athlete of all time. Athlete? Just off your standards with no other prompting because this is the whole argument. Go. He's got a finger up. Serena, Usain, Phelps. In that order or just as a, an as ascension on the, no, on the top? in that order. In that order? Okay, Cause, interesting. Cause Lundy, you got someone? Phelps and Bolt get to get out. See, my brain just gets into a pretzel because I think of like just what you were talking about with Brady. Him elevating his team is like you can't buy that. Mm-hmm. Nobody else can do – like if you see Brady – or you have Brady behind you playing quarterback, you're like – I'm the best fucking wide receiver in the league right now with that guy there. Yeah. You throw even like a Matt Stafford or like a, a mid-range quarterback, it's not the same mentality as the guys playing. So as far as that goes, do I think he's the best athlete? No. Do I think he's the greatest athlete? Yes. But there's a big dip. For me, it's just a fuck. And then I, you think like, okay, you got Floyd Mayweather who's just doesn't lose and makes billions of fucking dollars. Right. Is he the best athlete? Is he the greatest athlete? Too many things for me to choose. So Lundy's, Lundy's throwing up boats versus goats. Best athlete of all time, go, greatest yeah, athlete of all I time. I think there's a distinction of it. I think I got to go uh, I gotta go Prefontaine. I got to go Iron Mike. Yeah. And Iron Mike's got to be in there, and I got to give it to Wayner. Just Wayner, just defining the game, and I'm Canadian. So I think those are my top three, greatest of all time. Interested to hear what you guys have to say. Throw out your greatest of all time on the Instagram post. Do me a favor. Because we got why we we've had a theory that like people who listen don't necessarily subscribe to the podcast. Talk to them in that camera, right that there. camera. Hi, right we're, to their so face. Oh, I can literally do the John Stewart thing now. Yeah. Meet me at camera too. Uh, subscribe to the podcast, at Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, wherever you guys do that. Because I think the downloads don't necessarily like we download pretty well. I think, um, but I think like we get tagged in way more shit than I actually see yeah. downloads in. So it's like if you haven't yet subscribed to the podcast, we appreciate it. This 
watch the iteration of this studio come to life. Uh, we're not going to have the, the saw sink in the background. Maybe we will. We might. Maybe we know. Maybe we just fucking take it and like post it up on the wall. I, I think real it's a, It's like a. It's like a metaphor for washing our hands of whatever bullshit we say on this thing. Yeah, this I is where we're wash gonna, my hands of it and leave. We're gonna baptize ourselves in the fucking murder sink. All right, uh, that's it for this week. I don't know. Do we need anything to close? No. No, that's it. All right, cool. Till next time, guys. Appreciate it. Subscribe. All that fun stuff. We'll see you next week.